Hello YouTube. If you're hunting that perfect dinner roll recipe, search no further. You found it. These are jailhouse rolls. This recipe's probably been in our family for well over 40 years. My mom was making these when I was a kid. Uh, and I think she got the recipe from one of my great aunts called jailhouse rolls. I'm going to show you how to make them today and, and some techniques to help you out. You're going to start off with a medium-sized potato that's been cooked. I baked mine in the microwave and peeled it. You want at least one cup of cooked potato. If it's more, that's okay also. We're going to add it to the blender with three eggs and uh, one cup of melted butter. Turn the blender on and get it to mix. And when I started cooking my potato, I measured out a cup and a half of warm water, at least 105 degrees. Added a teaspoon of my half a cup of sugar that I'm going to use in the rolls to the water and added a tablespoon of yeast, stirred that up and put it aside and let it set. I added seven cups of flour, two and a half cups of, I'm oh, sorry, two and a half teaspoons of salt and a half a cup of sugar and I mixed all my dry ingredients together because we're going to be incorporating those into our wet. Uh, once we got our potato mixture going well, we're going to pour our yeast mixture in there and turn the blender on and let that get incorporated. When we get that incorporated and smooth, you're going to need a spatula to get it out of that mix to get it out of the blender. And we're going to pour it in the bottom of our mixer and start adding our flour to get it incorporated. Uh, this mixture is the large uh, KitchenAid 600 series. I call it the Bohemoth because it's a monster. It's powerful also. We'll start out low and slow and when it starts incorporating the flour into our wet mixture we'll turn it up a little bit. As you can see the flour is kind of coming up on the sides because we're trying to you know get wet and dry to combine. So pushed it down and went ahead and added a couple of cups more cups of flour and we'll turn the mixer back on and keep incorporating the wet and the dry to get these rolls to the right consistency of what you're going to need. If these rolls are too dry, they will not taste good. So you want them to be a wet, sticky dough. And today I'm going to show you how to obtain whether or not you've got the right consistency of your dough. I can already tell because I've made these so many times that this dough is going to be a little stiff. So we're going to Go ahead and add the rest of our flour ingredients to it now. And I've got the mixture going too high, so we'll turn it down a little bit before I knock all the flour out. Then if I need more water, warm water, I'll add it. And like I said, I can already tell. You see how the the dough is is staying looking pretty firm and kind of flopping around in the mixing bowl. That means it's too dry. It's going to have to have a little more water added to it. So I'm going to grab a little more warm water and you're going to do this slowly. If it's too wet, you're going to add uh, more flour to it. And we are using all-purpose flour. Uh, all the ingredients and directions will be listed below. So I'm going to add a little bit more water to it because you can see it's more or less holding on to the dough hook too much. As you can see, once we add the water, that dough just starts falling off of the dough hook. And that's what you want. You want the dough to be settled in the bottom of the bowl. And the dough hook is actually picking up the dough and mixing it. It's doing a kneading process or a stretching process. Uh, this dough does go into the refrigerator overnight or at least six to seven hours. Uh, it does its wonders in the refrigerator. So, and they will, this dough will last in your refrigerator, you know, a good 10, 12 days. So if you only want to use it a little bit of a time, that's fine. It does take about three hours from the refrigerator for them to rise to the proper uh, height. And give you another quick tip on how to tell that you've got your rolls risen correctly. Take your dry finger, press into the dough that you're rising, and if it that dough bounces back to at least three quarters of where you were 
on these, mine usually bounce back 100%. You've got them risen enough to place them in the oven and bake them. The directions call for uh, bake at 450 for 10 minutes. Uh, since I make mine a little bit bigger, I do drop the temp down and bake them at 350 for 15 to 20 minutes until they're golden brown. And you'll have some butter melted, and when they come out of the oven, you'll baste them with some melted butter. Like I said, this does go into the refrigerator. All that's in the directions below. And I used a piece of saran wrap and a rubber band to hold the saran wrap on. This bowl is, like I said, about 14 to 16 cups. So you want, whatever the size of your dough is, you want your bowl to be at least three times the size of that dough. If not, your dough will come out of the bowl and it will be all over your refrigerator. So spray your bowl and the top. If you have like an old large Tupperware bowl with a lid, use that. It works great. Just be sure to spray it and the dough will come out easy. I actually forgot to spray the mixing bowl, so I'm having to use my dough hook to get it all scraped out. Once I get it all scraped out, take my spatula and kind of press it down flat. And I'll add a little cooking spray to the top of it. Put my saran wrap on it and put it in the refrigerator. The dough does its wonders in the refrigerator and like I said it's so forgiving it's been one of those recipes that you can a beginner can make and not you know you're going to be intimidated but don't be because it's very forgiving and easy to work with I only needed uh, made two batches to see them I think I made three this week I only needed enough uh, for two pans of rolls and a pan of cinnamon rolls so I'm going to take half of one batch of dough and I'm going to roll them into dough balls, place them on a cookie sheet that's lined with a piece of uh, Teflon, place them in the freezer and I'm going to freeze them and then put them in a Ziploc bag and get out what we want. Okay, let me kind of explain the rolling out texture, I mean the rolling out process. If you wanted to use a rolling pin and roll them out to about half to three quarters of an inch then use a two inch biscuit cutter you could do it that way also the way I'm doing it is the old-fashioned style they call it pinching off rolls uh, you get your dough surface smooth and you take your first two fingers of your left hand and you'll use your thumb and finger to pinch off the roll and to keep the surface smooth or to smooth your surface back out after pinching off rolls, you'll flour the surface and then use your hands to tuck the dough under to get new surface. So you always want a smooth surface to be able to pinch that next roll off so it's, it's smooth when it starts out. That's what makes a nice real pretty roll if you just took your hands and grabbed a blob of dough and tried to smooth it out that way it wouldn't look too good so like I said this is more of a technique that you'll have to learn how to do make sure your hands are floured well and as you're rolling that dough around tuck it under with both fingers on both hands and that's what gives you a new surface to work with and you're going to use like I said your first two fingers of the left hand to push the dough up into between the thumb and the first finger to get it to where you can pinch off another roll. I allowed these to freeze in the in the freezer for <coughs> excuse me for about three hours, then I placed them in a Ziploc bag. Uh, if you're getting them out of the refrigerator, let's pretend we're in the morning. Uh, we're getting them out of the refrigerator. Let them sit for 30 to 40 minutes. And kind of warm up a little bit and that will allow them to be a little bit easier to work with. Uh, it will take about three hours from the rise but the way to test them is after your dough has risen a couple of hours press take your dry finger and press into the roll and if it bounces back at least three quarters of what you pushed in it's ready. Mine usually do a hundred percent what I push in they'll bounce back 
and it does take, like I said, between two and three hours. The last time I made them, it took three hours. When I get them out of the oven, I baste them in butter and allow them to cool. Now, while they're rising, I do take a clean cloth and cover them. And you can also spray the rolls with some cooking spray, and that just kind of keeps them from drying out and, and uh, just makes them taste a little bit better. If you've got any questions, leave them in the comments below. I'll help you where I can. Uh, like I said, these are also great for cinnamon rolls, hamburger buns. It's really a, a great dough recipe that's very forgiving. This is the Pressure Prepper. Hope you have a great Thanksgiving and Christmas. And I'm out.